Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah continue on in our reading of uh, some of tafsir al-sa'di from Imam al-sa'di rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatin wasiya in surat al-nas which is a surah a verse or a chapter of the Quran which was revealed in Medina Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem after A'udhu Billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Qul A'udhu bi Rabbin Nas Malik Nas Ilah Nas Min shiru waswasil khunnas Alladhi waswasu fi sudur al-Nas Min al-Jinn Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem Say, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ Say, I seek refuge with Allah the Lord of mankind The King of mankind The Ilah or the God of mankind From the evil of the whisperer who withdraws Who whispers in the breast of mankind Of jinn and men. Imam Sa'di, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, regarding Surah Al-Nas, he says, this surah contains isti'adha, meaning to seek, uh, seek a refuge with uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the owner and God of mankind. From the evil who is the origin of all evil and its foundation. So, uh, the Imam he mentions that this that Surah Al Nas, like Surah Al Falaq, uh, you know, is a seeking of refuge in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala from something. And in Surah Al Nas, we are seeking refuge in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala from the accursed, accursed uh, Shaitan. From the sh- shaitan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning, He says, Say, I seek refuge with Allah, the Lord of mankind, the King of mankind, the God of mankind. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is affirming His rububiyyah, His Lordship. And that isti'adha is also a type of ibadah. Isti'adha. Uh, all, all of these isti'ana, uh, 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 you know, seeking the support of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and seeking the uh, uh, assistance and having hope uh, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you from harmfulness. And so here the believer is actualizing an act of ibadah, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect, seek a refuge in Allah to protect him or her from the shaitan, from the one who whispers to mankind in jinn. So Imam Sa'di, and so this is Tawheed, uh, Tawheed al-Ibadah, or Tawheed al-Uluhiyah, if you will. So here we have in the beginning of this surah, we have both the rububiyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala established because he's the Rabbin Nas, he's the Lord of mankind, you know, he's Ilahin Nas, he's the, uh, the God of mankind. And then the believer is then seeking refuge in him, Tabarak wa ta'ala, from the uh, from the from the evil of mankind and the evil of jinn and from the shayateen. So Imam Sa'di says this surah contains isti'adha, seek a refuge with the Lord, owner, and ilah of people, from the devil who is the origin of all evil and its foundation, letting us know what that the shayateen, that the shaitan is the origin of all evil. Wa billah. Minhu, who, who, 
And he says, among the devils, evil and wickedness is that he whispers in people's hearts, making evil seem fair to them, portraying it in an attractive image and enticing their desire to commit sin. Think about this, Ahabat Tifinlah, that when so, sometimes, you, you know, of course we're trying to do good. We're striving. We're, we're, we're striving and putting forth effort, effort to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoid uh, uh, evil and avoid the shayateen. And think about when you're trying to do something good and then for men, as we mentioned prior to this, that one of the uh, most heaviest things that weighs on the hearts of men, if it isn't wealth, and the corruption that goes with, uh, for goes with a corrupt heart and striving for wealth in haram ways, then no doubt it's the women. And the Prophet sallallahu said that فَتَقُوا الدُّنْيَا وَتَقُوا النِّسَا فِنَا أَوْلَ فِتْنَ بَانِ إِسْرَائِيلِ كَانَ فِي النِّسَا The Prophet alayhi said, fear uh, the, the worldly life. اِتَقُوا الدُّنْيَا وَتَقُوا النِّسَا And fear the women. For verily the first fitna that befell Bani Israel, the children of uh, of, of of Israel of Israel, uh, was the women. Then you know that was the first fitna that they 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 that befell them. That was the first fitna that befell their that 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 was was harmful to their men, harmful to their hearts, causing them to be enticed by the women and to do sinful to not do it in a lawful way, but to be enticed to be corrupt by doing zina, fornication, masturbation, all of those kind of things, which are products of corrupt uh, heart. And if we reflect upon our lives, how often is it that just the simplest thing, the simplest encounter can sometimes shake you up? That a woman, she wears, she beautifies herself and she wears makeup. Maybe you're trying to lower your gaze, you're trying to be good, and just Maybe she's a work colleague and just her saying hi and giving a seductive smile, going beyond the bounds. Maybe she's just, that's her, her nature. She wants to be cute. She wants to entice, even though she might not directly mean to entice you. And she may directly mean to entice you. But the point is, is how hard that can be on the heart. That that can shake you up the whole day if you are weak in your heart. And if you're, especially for those who are unmarried. And those people who have corruption in their heart, that can knock you off your block. That can knock you knock you off the box. Because that little bit of enticement can shake you up and be a stamp on your heart. So there's how it comes to you. And the shaitan whispers and plays and plays and brings scenario after scenario uh, through the whisperings. To where your whole mind is busy with that. And I don't have any statistics right now, but they say that that uh, some of those who, uh, who, who study, uh, you know, statistically the effects of the effects of the, uh, you know, how often men think about the opposite sex and think about, uh, uh, you know, pursuing their sexual passions and desires. They say something like it's a matter of every 30 seconds, several times, perhaps. It's something very high like this. And so this even affects the believer and the best amongst the believers. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the 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 uh, ways of that, that we're supposed to cut off the, the 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 way to zina, you know, not even go close to zina, that we should be lowering our gaze and so forth, because it's from our fitra, it's from our nature that they're finding. And uh, and the Islam has already realized this, but only now. It seems that the West and others are beginning to understand how much uh, that that those things preoccupy the minds of of men, that they are so preoccupied that in a day we can't even begin to count how many times they're thinking about, you know, and it's from their fitra because they have a innate inclination towards women and wanting to why you know Islam allows us to have more than one wife. Because some men are really uh, their their prowess 
their sexuality and the way their their thought and what they need to control them to to to, to sink their heart to comfort their heart is more than the average man or more than the next guy so you know these things are are occupied and the shaitan definitely knows how to uh, appeal to your nature and appeal to your desires and make you be unnatural in your desires so going back to the hadith the prophet said you know fear the dunya and fear the women because both of those things can can uh uh supersede your good deeds and and, and can, can be a force of control in your heart they can control everything that you do that when someone is miftun someone is is uh they are afflicted with fitna and afflicted by their desires every encounter everything they do they don't just go to the store they go to the store in hopes of encountering the opposite sex so they might make themselves the woman might beautify herself and the man might also make himself more handsome or or whatever the case may be because he's so preoccupied with that everything he does he goes to work well there's a female or two at work i think i gotta make myself more handsome i've got it this maybe i'll go this way so i can run into her maybe this i hopefully i can say hi this you know it, it preoccupies and this is what happens this is how the shaitan uh whispers and especially when the the more that you're miftun, the more that you are uh, afflicted by fitna, then it's only gonna uh, it's only gonna get worse. It's only gonna get worse, and that's why we need the prescription. You, you know, coming back to uh, the moldu of the surah, you know, seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa taala from the whisperings of the shaitan. That's imperative. The Imam then goes on to say, he said, that among the devil's evil and wickedness is that he whispers to people's hearts, making evil seem fair to them, portraying it in an attractive image and enticing their desire to commit it. The devil also portrays righteousness in an undesirable image, discourages people from practicing it and makes it out to be other than, than what it is in reality. Look at the power of the shaitan. Look at the power of the shaitan and look at the, the fiqh of this imam, Imam Sa'di, rahimahullah ta'ala, letting us know that even the shaitan distorts and through his whispering, he helps to distort your image of the haq and your image of goodness and your image of righteousness that you can be corrupted, your heart can be so corrupted. And that's from the additional negative stimulus. And the shaitan is just feeding you and whispering you to make uh, uh, that which is wicked to seem pure. And that which is pure seem unappealing or even wicked. And let me get this brings to mind. Think about this thing among uh, amongst Muslim men. How many Muslim men, there are those who, who believe and know that it's sinful to shave their beards. But then there's many who say, no, the beard is sunnah. Okay. But how many of them, they say, their beauty comes from not having the beard. So they believe. So here, wickedness, which is to go against the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu which is to grow your beard, has now, see, now seems appealing. Shave it clean. Have the baby face. This is going to be more appealing. And this is coming from whisperings of the shaitan and, of course, the... Uh, whisperings in the societies in the various societies around the world and so here then you find that then the people begin to look down on the beard especially a beard that is uh, you know not just the fashionable beard that's been cut perfectly and trimmed perfectly uh, you know for fashion but the beards that are grown they're grown out sometimes they're uneven sometimes you know because they're they're trying to adhere to the to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, trying to follow the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and the madhab of the Salaf Asari, Ridwan Allahi alayhim. So then they just grow their beard and they may beautify it, they may put the creams and they may put the, the oils and, and things and brush it and, and comb it. 
but they're not cutting it. They're not going with those trends. And now, Bill Axe, now you see it's a trend now in the world. And this, uh, this trend, you know, a lot of the Muslims are growing their beards to look like the non-Muslims. Not for the Sunnah because they want to look and they want to have the fade or the uh, or the mohawk or this or like this because the footballers have it. Subhanallah. The Prophet said, You will follow the way of those people who preceded you uh, even if they went into the hole of a lizard. That even if they went in the hole of this lizard, the, the dhub, which is very famous here where I'm living, and some of the people eat them, and the Keta Dhub, the Dhub, he goes into a hole, uh, not like uh, your average lizard, but their holes are very intricate, they're windy, and the way the people hunt the Dhub, they have various ways. One of the ways is they back their pickup trucks and they put a uh, a device to catch the smog of the truck, the, 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 the smoke of the truck, and they blow it into the hole until the Dhub peers his head out, then they grab its neck or they set a trap to grab it. Another way is they make a, 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 a ridge around the hole and then they pour water because they have to flood the thub so he comes out because the thub hates water. So when it, water goes in there, the thub will appear and then they'll grab his neck or they will have a rope and they'll snatch him by the neck. The point being, showing us the intricacy of the jahra thub, of the hole of the thub. And that we would follow, as the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, we would follow the nations that came before us and the, the, the Jews and the Christians and others. We would follow their ways until even if they went into the hole of this lizard, we would do so. And we see that, that we even do that. And that's why shirk and kufr is even in the um of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because of this very fact of, of following disbelieving traditions instead of following the book and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and all of this comes from the whispering of the shaitan and his beautification of uh of bid'a and beautification of kufr and his beautification of shirk to where shirk appears to be tawheed and tawheed appears to be shirk and to where kufr appears to be iman and iman appears to be kufr to where bid'a appears to be uh, is beautified to where it appears to be sunnah, and sunnah seems as if it's bid'ah. And this becomes the tasawwur of the people. This is how the people, their their new uh, perception, it comes from this deception and whispering of the shaitan. وَإِيَادَ بِاللَّهِ وَإِيَاكُمْ مِنَ الشَّيَاطِينَ مِنْ الْإِنْسْ وَالْجِنَّ then uh, the imam, he says, this is the nature of the devil. He whispers and then withdraws. That is, withdraws when the slave mentions his Lord. So here's your protection. Mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making dhikr. And seeks his help to repel the devil's whispers by making isti'adha. You know, a'udhu billah bin shaitan rajim I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed devil. So, this repels the shevel, the, 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 the devils, and his whispers. For that reason, the slaves should seek refuge, protection, and shelter with Allah's lordship over all of mankind. All creation is under Allah's lordship and kingship. There is not a moving, living creature, but Allah holds its forelock. They should also seek refuge with Allah, with Allah's uluhiya, in that they must de uh, dedicate all acts of worship to him and him alone, this being the reason he created them. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. So all of our worship, all of our, our, our ibadah should be mukhlis. It should be sincerely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It should be uh, actualized uluhiya, the, the uh, tawheed uh, ibadah, tawheed of worship, that all acts of worship is sought from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is done to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we worship Allah tabarakwa, tabaraka ta'ala alone. We worship Him, we supplicate to Him and Him alone. We don't supplicate to the dead, we don't supplicate to the great, we don't sacrifice to anyone except to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Bismillah rahman rahim and we sacrifice, and we don't leave dead animals and sacrifice them to the graves, and we don't sacrifice it to our dead grandfathers and our dead fathers and grandmothers, and we don't sacrifice it for the dead saints. 
We don't supplicate to the saints. We don't seek their shifa and their assistance. We don't say that Jenna is coming, you know, whoever meets so-and-so, they're going to Jenna because of this man or the, the this dead man. So it shows us that it has to be part of your your seeking refuge, isti'adha, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through uh, through pure worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That it's seerly from Allah. You're not seeking refuge in Abdul Qadr al-Jilani or uh, Abdullah al-Harari or uh, any of, of the people who are alleged saints or even people who were saints or even the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. You don't supplicate to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> uh, then the Imam, he says uh, about the uh, people seeking refuge in the created things, he says they cannot fulfill its implications unless and until they repel the evil of their enemy who desires. Uh, he's, here he's talking about the person seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they will not be able to uh, repel the enemy, which is the shaitan, uh, who desires to divert them from fulfilling uh, their ibadah and to separate between them, meaning separate. The shaitan is trying to separate you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the sh shaitan is trying to sep you, separate you from doing good and fulfilling good actions. And the shaitan is trying to separate you from a'mal uh, salih from righteous deeds and righteous acts of worship, and from tawheed, uh, tawheed al-ibadah, you know, from your tawheed, your 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 worship being devoted uh, sincerely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The shaitan, that's his job, is to whisper and to divert you from the path of khair and righteousness. The devil wishes to add people to his 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 bishaitan his group, so that they all become dwellers of the hellfire. It should be noted here that the whisper can be from the jinn and from mankind, as indicated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement of men, men al jinnati wa nas, and from men, uh, from men, mankind, and jinn, letting us know they can all, that there are devils from mankind and the jinn who whisper and who try to divert you from the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think of how many times you've tried to make remembrance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dhikr, and then someone has come up to you with uh, negative and evil and backbiting. And, and sometimes just to do something, that they even want to bring something muharram. They want you to engage in their discussion of muharramat and sinfulness and wickedness and shafaniyah. So this shows us that that uh, the devils come in the form of men and jinn as well. And so, thus ends the Imam's brief discussion of the surah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.